What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and I'd like to go ahead and talk about setups in sim racing. Now, first of all, uh, a few things. You can figure out whatever this background footage is that I'm including in this video down in the description. And yes, I'm using a different microphone for this video, that's why I sound different this time around. So let us begin. The idea of car setups within sim racing is something that seems to be oddly controversial. For example, in the iRacing ecosystem, people are constantly asking for fixed setup series because they're somehow more fair. There's this idea that exists out there that setups are 95% black magic, and if you don't know how to do them, well, you don't know how to do them, and therefore, like, you're never going to be competitive. But the reality is often much more gray, in my opinion. And I want to go ahead and use this video to kind of talk about some of these things in the gray areas and the discussion that I feel needs to occur at some point rather than just continuing this oh I'm pro fix setup or I'm pro open setup. Let's go ahead and start off with the discussion of fairness. Oftentimes people view fixed setup racing as if it is inherently more fair because everybody has the exact same car so therefore it's equal for everybody and that's that. It is fair. However, by the same token, could you not argue that it is more fair if everybody is able to tweak the car to their liking within the setup adjustments that the car offers? One driver may prefer their car to drive like an understeering dump truck because that's the way that they get the most out of the car, whereas another driver may like their car to be oversteering all over the place because that is what they need. This fairness is actually, in my opinion, an illusion. To that end, I would like to go ahead and talk about the false idea of competitiveness as well as the fact that the vast majority of us honestly aren't as good as we think we are. Sim racing is very weird in that there's racing. It's very clearly defined. If you ain't first, you're last. It's got that whole thing that enabled them to make the movie Talladega Nights because everybody understands that is how the world of racing operates. Sim racing is a bit of a different beast though for the vast majority of us because what it really comes down to in sim racing is your competition. Sim racing is for the vast majority of us not Formula One, is not NASCAR, is not WEC or IMSA or IndyCar or anything like that. It's more like club racing. We may just be happening to race those cars but the level of competition can vary wildly between races. For example, myself, a really just above average, not particularly fast driver, I can honestly say I've won hundreds of races over the years. Largely because oftentimes in those public server environments, the competition was just not to my level. What have I actually earned? At the same time, I can also say if I ended up in a race with a bunch of pro esports tryhards and I was actually keeping up with them, I'd be like, man, I am, I am proud of the fact that I finished second to last <laughs> because you know what? I was keeping up with them and I feel like I did a good job. And I feel like a lot of drivers will also understand what I'm talking about here. Oftentimes your success is going to be determined by how you feel like you did rather than perhaps your overall finishing position. Now it may sound confusing as to why I'm talking about this in a video talking about whether or not setup should be this thing that is a point of controversy within the sim racing community. After all, what do setups have to do with your finishing position? Of course, the answer is a lot, but at the same time, the vast majority of drivers are not esports pros. Just the other day, there was some statistics posted on the iRacing forums that indicated 75% of drivers on iRacing fall at 2,000 i rating or below. 86% of drivers fall from 2,500 i rating and below. Now, while I'm not one to shame other drivers for their i rating because honestly, I don't put very much stock in it at all, I will say from experience, I strongly feel that 2000 I rating is a level that is attainable by most drivers simply by making good quality decisions and using a little bit of practice time. This also mirrors my experience in public server racing through the last two decades. Allow me to be brutally blunt here. Most of us, a lot of us, myself included, we kind of suck to one degree or another. The reality is that most of us just aren't that great. And that's perfectly fine. It's great to be average because then there's a lot less pressure on you. Believe me, that's my whole life. But, uh, you know, the thing is that separates me from a pro esports driver 
uh, separates most of us from a pro esports driver is not a setup. It is not how the car is geared to go around the track. It's not our tire pressures. It's our skill. It's our time commitment. It's our dedication to it. It's any one of a number of factors even before you get to the point of discussing setup. In this environment, what ends up naturally happening is a car setup ends up becoming some form of excuse. This is kind of the thing all over again where drivers, especially in iRacing, will see that they have car contact, they got a 4X, and we'll just see that and we'll hone in on that even though the fact is that their car is now a smoldering heap on the side of the track. You know, drivers will fail to finish up the order and it'll be oh well they got faster setups you know like that's the only difference you know if they just had a better setup they'd automatically win all of the races when for the vast majority of drivers that's not how it's going to work out don't get me wrong setups absolutely will make a difference and will impact your lap times that is the whole point of a car setup however i just have to say when the vast majority of drivers aren't even maximizing the setup that they're given to a reasonable degree. It does quickly become one of these things where it feels like it is being used as a scapegoat more often than not, and the reality is we really should not care as much as what we do. I want to go ahead and kind of address some comments regarding why people are in favor of fixed setup racing. First of all, there is the time element. Uh, I can understand this. I honestly don't play these games as much as many people would think someone posting YouTube videos of these games do. You know, I, I'm one of those people that probably spends two or three hours a week, if even that, depending on what's going on in the world of sim racing. And yes, it can be somewhat time-consuming if you want to go ahead and make it time-consuming. However, if you're going to be doing practice, you can also be working on the car setup. Those two things don't happen at two different times. They actually happen at the same time, and as part of doing your practice that you're probably going to do anyways just to get kind of prepared for a race... You could also make the car drive more to your liking, so it actually isn't any more time consuming. Then of course there is the I don't know how to or I don't understand it and I'll say is that the case or have you simply not made the effort yet? I mean basically every racing sim out there right now at this point has tool tips in the garage screen which will tell you what effect a change is going to have on your car's handling. There are umpteen thousands of videos covering car handling and setup changes. Uh, thousands of pages on the internet documenting the exact same thing. I mean, all you have to do is search. What do you want to learn? And of course, there's always the older school approach of brute force, and that is just change something. Go drive some laps, see what change changes. And that's a very valid point, a very valid way to actually go ahead and learn because you know, at the end of the day, you never know what you might find. And as part of that, you know, you're going to learn something. You're going to learn that maybe the car likes a certain spring rate or alternatively a certain camber. You know, maybe the rear wing is actually more beneficial to go ahead and take all of the rear wing out because it doesn't really make a difference to the overall downforce level. This is part of practice. This is part of learning. This is part of becoming more knowledgeable and becoming better as a sim racer is taking these steps and going from beyond I just drive around in circles and of course if anyone's going to say oh well the driver drives and the engineer engineers just remember that we live in a world where the drivers are often asked to make car setup adjustments on the fly for example in indie car racing they have adjustable front and rear anti-roll bars weight jacker which also is going to change the way the car handles Formula One is very well known for their 82,000 different differential and hybrid regeneration deployment setup options change per lap. <laughs> like NASCAR has adjustable track bars and don't you dare think that any of those drivers at NASCAR levels has no idea what tire pressure adjustments do. So to say the driver just drives and the engineer engineers is very... The only place where that actually applies would be sports car racing with gentlemen drivers who are just plopped into the car and told not to kill themselves. So to sum up the first portion of this video here, just do the thing. So let's see if I can go ahead and talk about setup shops without having a brain aneurysm. Now I'm not going to say that all setup shops are bad or disreputable or anything like that. I don't believe that and that doesn't seem to be the case. That's not what I'm told. That's not what I see. That's not what I'm going to pretend it is. However, of course, like anything, when there's money involved, there will be people that are... Well, yeah. 
I'm not here to guilt trip you for buying setups, but rather I would say, what are you getting out of what you're paying? For example, I know there's free setups that are provided from a bunch of different services within iRacing, for example, where you can get a baseline setup that you tweak from there. Those can be great. I would strongly suggest you utilize those because at the very least, it gives you a point of comparison or reference as well as something to expand your knowledge base off of. You know, there are services out there that are aimed to helping you become a better driver, which even re disregarding setups entirely, very well may be a great value for you. But then there's also services that are out there uh, where they're basically trying to sell you a setup and just like, here you go, yeah, more or less like, oh hey, now you're going to win races because that's how it works, which if you're someone who is the 75%, the 2000 I rating driver, the thing that separates you from the 7000 I rating driver who just wins every single race is not the setup. Simply paying that team $16 for one week's worth of setup for one car will not give you 7,000 I rating skill. Setups matter, but let me just tell you this, you still have to drive the car. So essentially what I'm getting at is I can understand why people would go to setup shops and I understand it. I, I'm not here to guilt trip you again. I would just rather hope that people are actually doing a, a solid evaluation of what they are getting for their expenditure and whether or not that uh, money could perhaps be put to better use in other places if or alternatively you just save your money just who doesn't like saving money alrighty let's go ahead and talk about fixed setup racing as a whole though because to this point it sounded like I'm very much against fixed setup racing and that actually is not the case so first of all there's two type of racing that I strongly am in favor of a fixed setup environment there's something like the C-Fixed NASCAR trucks and I racing, as, as I refer to it, trucks in, which is a great fixed setup environment because it creates one of these things where everything is all so close together and so straightforward and simple to drive and like anybody and everybody can do it, which just makes it for a very fun train wreck of an experience. Like you don't get that with an open setup environment and it's something distinctly different. The other case would be Indy cars on an oval because setting up an Indy car on an oval is 90% of Indy cars on ovals. When you spend as much time in the throttle as you do in an Indy car on an oval, there's only so much that you, the driver, can actually do. And oftentimes that means that setup will have an even bigger factor on the outcome of the race than it will in many other disciplines. It's sort of a black sheep in this regard. I mean, even comparing to other types of oval racing, it is particularly setup dependent. And even still in that instance, you know, the open series versus the fixed series are different because the setup is such a big factor and the way those cars perform on the ovals that you end up with two very radical different experiences because you've changed something that is so core to the racing itself. Beyond that, my general picking fixed series races on the oval side of things versus open series races generally just comes down to the fact that there tends to be more people racing in fixed setup races than open setup races, which comes down to the fact that people think that they're more competitive in the fixed environment and Maybe it appears that way on the lap times, even if they are still just as likely to win the race. But what it really comes down to is, as I see it, one of the biggest factors in whether or not a race is going to be a close, exciting race, as I view it, is how many people are registered into it. If one race has three times as many people registered into it as one of the other races on the same track with the same cars, I have a much higher likelihood of finding a competitive solid fun race when there's three times the driver pool to pick from and that's what it really comes down to and this is really why i'd be most in favor of seeing a large majority of the fixed and open setup series within iRacing merge together back into one because that would honestly serve everybody the best in my opinion because when there's more drivers there's more splits when there's more splits you're racing with more people in your skill level and when you have an open setup environment you can actually go ahead and make a setup that isn't a dump truck if you so choose 
But anyways, that is that. I'm going to keep it under 15 minutes. So hope you guys enjoyed. I right, bye. Some good stuff once the flag man put the yellow flag, flag away. <laughs> Great job, you did really well. Good win, Red. Thirteen, I apologize, dude. That's pretty good. I had a really good finish.